shooting with one hand. Not something a lot of us do that we practice very often, right? Kind of like shooting basketball. If you're not that good at shooting with left, your left hand and you're right-handed, you don't do it very often because it's not fun. This is a little bit different. We've got reasons why shooting with one hand is something that we should be practicing on a regular basis because we're not good at it. Let's talk a little bit more about that. When we practice shooting guns, why do we do that? It's so that we're more proficient whenever we actually have to use them. So why don't we practice with one hand? Because chances are, and definitely statistically speaking, there's a very good chance that you and I are gonna have to use our firearms using one hand at some point. When you get attacked, it's very unlikely that you're always going to be in the ideal situation. It's very unlikely that all conditions are gonna be perfect for you, and at that point, you're gonna be able to utilize every single bit of muscle memory that you've ever used as far as practicing goes. In fact, quite the opposite is true. Most likely, nothing you've practiced is going to be in place when you get attacked and you have to draw your firearm to use it for self-defense purposes. Now, why would we have to shoot with one hand? Here's some examples. Maybe you have a damaged hand. You got hurt fending off somebody. Maybe you're holding a child or pushing a child back. I have a special needs son. My son doesn't understand danger. So if something were to happen and we were to get attacked, there's a very good chance that I'll have to probably hold my son back or push him back behind me to keep him back because he won't understand the danger that's involved if he gets out in front of me or he gets in the line of fire. So a lot of times if I'm in a situation with my son, if I were in any kind of a situation where I were to be attacked, most likely my left hand or one of my hands is going to be used on him to just hold him in place and to keep him out of the way. You might be holding a flashlight. Well, you're going to need that flashlight. You're not going to drop it just so you can get a good shot. You probably need that flashlight in order to get a good, accurate shot. You might be lying down. You may be in a prone position. It's very possible you're in some kind of a position laying on your side or shooting under something or around something that the other hand is, even though it might be available for support, it's not in a position where it can be utilized for support. And speaking of that, you just might be out of position. Let's say you're shooting around a door, you're standing up, and you, again, you have that left hand available, but it's just not going to give you a good shot. It might expose you more. It might get you out more in the open where now you, you're becoming a, a danger to yourself by exposing more of your body. So you want to stay more concealed, so usually that's going to allow you only to use that one hand. And in many cases, USPSA and IPSC shooting, different types of competition shooting, sometimes a stage might require you to shoot with your strong or your weak hand. So there you're gonna get a little bit of practice as well. Some things to consider whenever you're shooting with one hand. Uh, you wanna consider the size of the caliber. Here we go into the whole caliber argument. This is one of the arguments that can be made for a little bit lighter caliber. You want not only control over that felt recoil, but you also want a quality follow-up shot. If you're shooting a very large caliber, a 45 or a, a 10 millimeter, a true 10 millimeter, or something even bigger than that, chances are if you have any kind of uh, uh, slowness getting back on target with two hands, multiply that by quite a bit whenever you're using that only, only that one hand because now you're going to be taking that much longer to get back on target. And of course, controlling that felt recoil once the gun fires is gonna be a whole lot harder. So not only are you gonna be having a little bit more uh, uh, out of place than you normally would be, but trying to get back on target accurately and timely is gonna be a heck of a lot more of a challenge. The size of the gun is gonna come into play. Yeah, I know caliber is an issue, but let's say we downsize our gun from say a 45 to a nine millimeter because we feel like the nine is gonna give us more accurate uh, follow-up shots and more control whenever we're shooting the gun. Well, at the same time, if you get a mid-sized nine millimeter, you're probably gonna be in really good shape, depending on the size of your hands, the size of your body, and how you can control the firearm and all that strength, age, all of that comes into play. However, if a person like me that has normal to a little bit larger hands chooses, say, that nine millimeter because I can control that round a little better, however, I choose too small of a gun, if I choose too small of a gun and I'm in, let's say, a sweaty situation where my hands are wet and I'm only shooting with one hand and I have a really small gun, a person like myself may want to choose a more of a mid-sized gun instead of these little micro nines that they have out there. I'm probably going to look for something like a Glock 19 or a Glock 26 in this case. Glock 26 fits my hand really well. I tend to shoot it a lot. I tend to carry it a lot because even if I do shoot with one hand, I always feel like that, I'm, that I maintain pretty good control over it and my follow-up shots are pretty good. It fills out my hand. That's one thing that's going to be very important. 
Yes, you can probably shoot most guns really accurately and really efficiently with two hands, but you wanna practice and see if you have a little trouble controlling either a really big or a really small gun with only one hand, you probably wanna opt out of that and find something that fits you a little bit better. Another thing to consider whenever you're shooting is that when you're shooting with two hands, uh, my good friend Max Michelle once said that you put about 60, I believe his numbers were 60% on your support hand whenever you're actually holding the gun with two hands. So that means that I'm gripping with my right hand, my shooting hand, with about 40%, and I'm using about 60% here. Well, when this hand goes away, and I'm only shooting with my support hand, now I've got 100% of that grip in my one hand. So I'm transferring from having most of my grip in my support hand to that 60% just went away. So I can't just maintain my 40%, now I've got 100% of a grip. And let's not forget, guys, you wanna shoot single-handed with both hands. I'm right-handed, I need to practice left-handed. In fact, I probably need to practice a lot more left-handed than I do right-handed. The dexterity, the strength, the range of motion uh, in both of your hands are gonna be totally different because obviously your weak hand is called that for a reason, it's weaker. So it's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge to get that proper grip on that left hand. So you certainly wanna practice with that because again, our ideal situation may not align itself to where I can use my right hand if I'm forced to shoot with only one hand. It may be only my left hand that I have the option. If I'm shooting around a door on the left hand side, very unlikely that I'm gonna be able to get, definitely not that shot with only my right hand, but most likely two hands I'm not because again, I'm exposing myself. That left-handed single shot is probably all I'm gonna be able to get off. So you've got to practice with both hands. In my case, I actually severed a tendon in my left hand years ago, and I don't have the same range of motion with my thumb in my left hand as I do with my right hand. So it's a completely different practice uh, uh, standpoint and approach for me shooting with one hand with my left hand even, just swapping hands. And, and, and that brings up a good point too, guys. You want to practice transitioning that gun. You want to practice exchanging that gun from right to left, left to right. Now, this makes it a little bit of an unsafe uh, act if you're not totally safe at the range because you're dealing with live rounds. So you probably wanna do a little bit of that practice between transitioning from hand to hand with an unloaded gun at first and then maybe put that into play out at the range. At some point, that, that, that gun is going completely from one hand to the other. So there's a good chance it gets dropped or, uh, or something like that until you get proficient at that. Another reason why we wanna practice shooting with a single hand is because when you're shooting with two hands, your sight picture is a little bit different. In other words, the, the, the angle of my wrist, you see how my wrists are angled like this? If I'm shooting a gun like, like straight forward like this, the angle of my wrists are, are placed as such, okay? Obviously, you're looking at it from what you would see from the bottom if I were shooting. Now, if I'm shooting with one hand, notice this angle of my wrist right here. Notice how it comes, my forearm goes up here and then it goes up straight. Well, now if I'm shooting with one hand, I'm probably shooting like this. So notice how my grip angle, my wrist angle, is almost straight all the way through. It's because it's a totally different thing. Uh, I understand if you're shooting us isosceles or weaver, that's a little bit different. If you shoot isosceles, um, you're probably shooting, like I said, like this. And if you're shooting more weaver, you're shooting off like this. I'm not a big fan of the shooting the weaver. I shoot IPSC, uh, USPSA. So it, it just, it, it works better for me going left and right and having full range of motion when I'm shooting isosceles. But no matter what you're doing, if you're shooting with just one hand, that grip angle is different. You always wanna lock that wrist no matter what. So you're locking your wrist in a totally different angle. You're either locking it here when you're shooting with two hands or you're locking it here whenever you're shooting with one hand or here if you're shooting with your left hand. Now, not only are you gripping the entire gun and you're trying to control muzzle rise and everything else, you're also trying to aim and pull a trigger. You're doing everything with one hand. I know it sounds simple because guns, you think in most cases are just point and pull the trigger, but that's not always the case. Again, guys, you're getting kind of a death grip and you may be over accenting a little bit and getting 110% grip. You know what I mean? Too much grip. What that's gonna do is when you go to pull that trigger, you, your trigger finger also is gonna be a little bit more in a heightened sense. And obviously, if you're in a real-time shooting situation, you're gonna have adrenaline dump also. But this finger, the trigger finger, you may be actually manipulating it a little bit by, by you're gripping so much with your hand that now you don't have that smooth trigger pull and it may be too hard and too jerky of a trigger pull, which what, that, what that's gonna do is, that's gonna take that muzzle off your target. Whenever you pull on that, you may be pulling that thing, obviously right-handed shooters are known for pulling left and down. So that's one thing you wanna be careful of. You wanna go to the range and practice that, but not just practice 
pointing the gun out there and pulling the trigger or, or aiming it and shooting, you want to practice pulling the trigger in an effective way. Make sure that you're not pushing that muzzle off uh, out of the line of sight. Sometimes the best way to practice that, I have found anyway, is do that with a gun that either has a laser on it or you can put a laser on your uh, uh, your rail mount on the bottom of it and practice dry firing at home. A lot of times you're gonna see that laser bouncing all over the place because you have a really inconsistent trigger pull. And what you wanna do is you wanna practice that with one hand until you actually minimize that, that laser bounce so that way you know that you're not overcompensating with your trigger finger by pulling too hard. You're not taking that muzzle off of your target. Now you don't wanna under grip and run the risk of stovepipes because if you under grip to try to not jerk your trigger, um, all of this is just something that you have to practice together because again, an under grip, too weak of a grip, that's going to not allow that action of that firearm, assuming you're shooting a semi-automatic, that's not going to allow that action and the timing to do what it needs to do in the time and the space that it needs to do it. And if you grip too low on the grip, um, or if you, you have too weak of a grip, you're gonna risk stovepiping and, and, and at that point, hey, if that other hand is incapacitated, now you're having to clear a round in your uh, firearm. So that presents a totally different problem. Uh, obviously one where you wanna have some sights on it that are some pretty hard sights. A lot of these newer carry guns come out with a rear sight that has a nice hard edge on it so that you can rack the slide on a table, on a belt or something like that if you need to. Gripping too low also, again, as I mentioned, you don't wanna to grip too low because you risk stove piping, but look, whenever you're grabbing your gun or if you're transitioning from one hand to the other, you may give it to yourself a little bit too low. Uh, obviously, if you have control and you can control um, how high you're gripping, you wanna get as high up as you can on that beaver tail on, and on that grip to maintain muzzle control, control and uh, obviously to prevent stove piping. Again, since it's unlikely we're gonna have a perfect situation, a lot of people in IPSC and USPSA, when they shoot with one hand, they'll ball that uh, support hand up that they're not using in a fist and hold it against their chest and then they'll shoot. Again, if I'm not using my left hand in a real life situation, if I'm not using it to actually hold that gun because that's where I'm gonna be more accurate, it's because it's being used elsewhere. So I find that when you practice with one hand, don't practice like this. Unless you're shooting, or excuse me, practicing for IPSC or USPSA shooting, that's fine. What I like to do is I hold this 10 pound weight in my hand. The reason why I do that is because it's not comfortable. There's no easy way to hold it. And it's one of those situations where I know that I have, even if it's a fraction, a fraction of brain power that's focused on that, uh, focusing on that support hand to try to hold that weight so that puts me, again, a little bit closer to that real life situation that I might need to be in. Again, if it's easy, then it's not something that I'm really working on. It's not much of a practice. In other words, you don't wanna have something that has a nice cushy handle on it, like an ice chest or something like that, a nice foam handle. Make it uncomfortable, make it something that's not natural. Because again, that left hand or that right hand, if you're not using it to support the gun, it's being used to do something that's probably not natural anyway. I know we talked about not having the ideal situation, but if you have a situation where you can position your feet the way you want to, in many cases, if you're shooting with just one hand, whether it be right-handed or left-handed, whatever hand you're shooting with, put that foot forward. So if I'm shooting right-handed with a single hand and I'm putting my right hand forward, I wanna put my, my right foot slightly forward too. And I wanna bend that right knee a little bit. What that's gonna do is that's gonna put a lot of my weight forward of my stance instead of back on it. You know how we see a lot of people that are shooting incorrectly and they go to shoot and they're leaning way back and the gun just pushes them back? It's because they're not standing right. In this case, if you put a lot of your weight forward and you bend that right knee ever so slightly, not only are you gonna be able to absorb more of that recoil whenever you shoot that gun, but you're in way more control. You're not sending it behind your weight. You're keeping it in forward, forward of that, that, that neutral balance of weight. Instead of being in the middle or behind, you're actually in front of it. So again, you're able to control that recoil a whole lot more. One thing that you see a lot of in competition shooting, but you also may see it online a little bit, is you'll see some shooters camp the gun a little bit to the side. In other words, when they put that hand forward, instead of straight up and down at a 90 degree angle, you'll notice them turn it to the side a little bit. Now, I don't mean gangster shooting. I'm not talking about throwing bullets over your head and doing a full 90 degree turn with that gun. I'm talking about a slight turn because if you notice whenever you punch your hand forward a little bit, you'll notice that your, your arm and your wrist, it automatically starts to turn whenever you push your hand forward. So if you have one hand forward, this is the natural turn of my wrist. That's how my hand is wanting to move. 
So it's easier for me and more natural to put the gun out like this and shoot it than it is to shoot it straight up if I'm shooting with one hand. So you, you might wanna practice that. Now, the downside to that is that you have to practice that because if you're so used to shooting and your gun is always recoiling up and down, then now you have to get used to that gun recoiling like this off to the side a little bit. So you have to track those sights a little bit differently now that you're that you're slightly at an angle. So again, it's all practice. It's all about practice at this point. I like to set my targets up at between five and seven yards. Uh, seven yards being the optimum distance based on the FBI's findings uh, for the average self-defense situation. So I set my targets up at that and I practice with one hand. Again, we're not looking at 25 yard shots. I always say, if you're shooting at somebody 25 yards away, they're probably not much of a threat and you better get a good attorney. But at that five to seven yard distance, I like to take three shots. That's usually what a quote gunfight in our case, an everyday uh, citizen, average everyday guy is gonna be. So I'll take three shot strings and I'll do that at that five to seven yard distance. And I'll just practice that. And I'll use both hands and practice just getting used to that, that slight cant of that gun, getting used to my grip, getting used to the angle, locking my wrist, keeping my elbows unlocked slightly, just so I'm kind of absorbing that recoil a little bit. So again, those three, to, uh, three round strings at five to seven yards, that's probably the best practice you can get. And it's relatively cheap because you're not shooting a ton of ammunition at that point. It's not a bad idea either to practice the Mozambique drill, uh, two shots to the torso, one shot to the head. That, again, that's your three round string. So you might try that instead of just three uh, shots on target. If you can get a torso style target, uh, try the Mozambique drill. I mean, that's a really good drill and a really effective drill, obviously. Guys, if you never practice shooting, you shouldn't carry a gun, seriously. It's dangerous. You're a danger to yourself. You're a danger to other people. You're a danger to your family that you're trying to protect. Again, I'm not trying to encourage you not to carry. I'm trying to encourage you to practice. Practice, practice, practice. If you have zero practice doing a certain thing, like shooting with one hand, then that means you're gonna have zero muscle memory. Whenever all of your motor skills go out the window and you're relying on muscle memory, you've got none. You've got none to pull from. So if you practice these types of situations, that's a little bit of muscle memory that we can at least borrow from whenever we have that adrenaline dump. Guys, the key is protecting ourselves and our families. There are evil elements out there and they seek to do all of us harm. The worst thing that we can do is be unprepared for that one small fraction of time in time where we actually have to draw our firearm and use it. We want to be prepared. That's the biggest advice I can give you. Again, guys, if you don't practice, probably don't carry because you're endangering yourself and your family. Practice, practice, practice. Let's develop that muscle memory and make everybody around us, including ourselves and our families, a heck of a lot safer.